An exciting new project called Eigenlayer is getting close to launching on Ethereum. I'm joined by Matt to break down what Eigenlayer is and how to get involved. Welcome, Matt. Maybe you can jump right into the simple TLDR about exactly what it is and why it's important. Hi, Nick. Thanks. Yeah, as you said, Eigenlayer is a protocol that isn't launched yet, but it's getting close in, in later in 2023. So yeah, it is a mechanism or a protocol that has a new mechanism in the space known as restaking. So this protocol is something that starting with Ethereum, you'll be able to use if you're staking ETH, you'll be able to basically go to Eigenlayer to really dumb it down and just say, hey, you can use my staked ETH and you can then leverage on top of that and have other projects building on top of Eigenlayer that can essentially leverage that staked ETH as sort of security. This gives it sort of what's called economic security, which then just prevents it from getting, you know, attacked and whatnot. And, you know, we can talk a bit about the benefits of that, but for the average person who's staking ETH, this is going to be appealing for them because they now have an option to, you know, opt in to using Eigenlayer and yes, taking on additional risk, but then also being compensated for taking on that additional risk. So if you kind of know what you're doing with, um, you know, following the rules of the protocol, Call, you can then earn additional yield or additional rewards with your ETH in addition to sort of that regular sort of the you know, rewards that, you know, your average Ethereum stakers would be getting. Awesome there. I think that's a really good summary. Uh, so the high level there is you can rehypothecate your ETH uh, into different other, I guess, platforms. Is that right, Matt? Or is that uh, any other protocols that use Eigenlayer? for a variety of reasons. And is that why it, it matters so much because it could extend, I guess, the utility of ETH as an asset, but then also provide a different way to provide security in the ecosystem uh, without uh, launching your own tokens or seeing, seeing influx of tokens in the market. Yeah, that's that's it, Nick. I think in uh, starting off when it launches, it'll just have sort of one service, if you will. They call it sort of services, but you know, so there'll be a bunch of services in the future. So just picture dozens and dozens of different sort of just startups really that are, you know, building, building a service. Um, and their projects will then be one of a, of sort of a marketplace of, of services that, you know, me just as an example, as a someone who's staking ETH, I can go onto Eigenlayer's sort of marketplace and I can opt in to choose sort of which services do I feel confident sort of giving my ETH to them for them to lever basically leverage that staked ETH. Um, and I can kind of pick and choose which services. Um, so as you said, Nick, it's sort of probably the, like to get into the benefits of it, like the biggest one by far is that without Eigenlayer or before it existed, so which is now, <laughs> um, it's currently really expensive or like really you know, capital inefficient for as you said, a bunch of like new startups working and wanting to build on top of Ethereum in this case, they like to really have, if they're sort of wanting to build stuff on top of Ethereum that isn't sort of inherent to Ethereum, which is actually a lot of things uh, when you think about it, probably Oracles is the best example, but there's a lot of other sort of what they're called middleware solutions or middleware protocols that in this present day have to sort of, take a hit relatively speaking and have this challenge of sort of bootstrapping their own security and you know building something up where it's got enough economic value sort of floating around where it is able to sort of you know defend itself against sort of malicious actors um so one way they've been doing this historically is by launching a token um you know that can really bolster the security of it but then it gets to the question of hey is this token even necessary? Like a lot of them just turn out to be governance tokens of which the value in the long term is still pretty suspect or is unproven in, I should, I should say, um, or another sort of way that these services, um, sort of, you know, basically cut corners for lack of a better term is they sort of have a permissioned, uh, network where of their own validators, um, where, like their uh, chain link is a good example where they have like a permission sort of set of validators, at least at the start. And then they plan to eventually become permissionless, but it is a very, very long process again, that's still in an experimental stage. So it's important to understand that's where we are now. 
yes, it's a very, very great sort of progress we're making, but something like Eigenlayer sort of just really just flip, speeds up. I think what it's going to do is speed up that innovation because you're going to have just the cost of capital and the cost to experiment be rapidly sort of cut for you know the average startup out there. Yeah, it's an interesting idea you bring up about... I guess the cost to security, especially as we've seen a lot of tokens trying to launch their own chains, for, exa- for example, on Cosmos, one of the biggest negatives I think a lot of people discuss is this double-edged sword where you have to provide your own security guarantees, which is a whole other kettle of fish. And it's really tough to build up that that network security. And that's, I think that's where Ethereum really benefits from that like network effects of that security that it's already generated, which I think Onigon Layer can access. Uh, so you've spoken about where we are now, um, maybe where we're going and the state of development. Uh, I know there's some test sets that are coming up and there was a couple of raises. Maybe you can elaborate more on, on the state of development at the moment. Yeah, sure, Nick. Um, the state of development is that Eigenlayer uh, recently, so we're middle of April, just earlier this month, they announced uh, their first test net. So it's a sort of, they're rolling out their test net over uh, three stages. So this was the first test net. Um, they really made a point of saying that it is not an incentivized test net. Uh, so for those of you watching, an incentivized test net is, you know, typically in the crypto space, something that is, you know, a test net where the participants of the, so the testers, the people who go, Hey, I want to help, I want to help test this network that it's called an incentivized test net because their sort of data uh, an activity is recorded and typically they will at a later date become eligible for an airdrop once that project announces, Hey, we're going to have a token and here's how we're going to distribute it. Um, so this first stage isn't, isn't an incentivized test net. Um, but it's on, on their website at the moment. Um, and it's just a real sort of primitive stage, um, with so only, I think one or two sort of applications and, you know, examples of how restaking can be used. Um, so they will continue to launch sort of the second of those three stages and then the, the final third stage, uh, throughout 2023. And, you know, from what I've been reading and listening to, they are still expecting to, you know, deploy on, uh, on mainnet, uh, by the end of the year. Um, probably one reason why they can probably expedite that development process is because the team or entity behind uh, Eigen Layer, which is now called Eigen Labs. Um, they recently, just a few weeks ago, actually announced that they had, um, sort of closed their Series A investment round. Um, so I'm not, not, not sure when that sort of actually ended. Typically it's, you know, a couple, a couple months prior. Um, and that was worth 50 million. So that Series A round was, yeah, a very, one of the few ones we've seen this year, Nick. We probably were seeing these. You know, every, every other day back in, uh, <laughs> back about 18 months ago. But, you know, with that capital, uh, now, you know, in, in on their balance sheet and, you know, um, they're able to really probably hire more engineers and soft and smart contract developers and, you know, really, really sort of expedite that process. Yeah. I noticed there was some interesting uh, investors along, alongside that raise as well. Names like Coinbase Ventures. Polychain and I think Electric Capital is pretty big in the space. Mm. Uh, talk about these test nets that are coming up. Uh, is there the best? What's the best way I think to get involved if you're somebody who wants to experiment and see what all the buzz is about and how Eigenlay is working? Yeah, sure. I think um, yeah, my first sort of suggestion would be to you know head over to their to their test net now, which I'll I'll get up. It's it's literally. Oh, the, the, their website name, but you'll be able to find it once you go onto the, the website. Um, so you can see here, just Rocket Pool and, and Lido are sort of two of the basically just practice ones or simulation, simulated sort of, uh, restaking mechanisms that they've got here. Um, other ways to get involved with Eigenlayer, I would say, you know, check out their, their code base. If you, if you're sort of more technically oriented, that's available on GitHub. They're encouraging people to comment, leave feedback on there. Um, and then of course I would suggest joining their discord. Uh, they have a discord server set up, which, um, again, is accessible through their website. Um, I would probably emphasize that, make sure you're on their website and go through the correct discord link. Um, and they've sort of got a lot of conversation. So join in the conversation, 
and whatnot to learn more about it. And then keep an eye out uh, on their announcements for Sage 2 and Sage 3 uh, if you're wanting to sort of get more involved and uh, likely be eligible in, in the future at some stage um, once they eventually tokenize. Um, worth mentioning, as Nick and I sort of really try to drum home to our, our members and um, worth you know noting for the public, these tokens, a lot of them, the value of them long term is still pretty, you know, subjective and not yet proven, um, especially when you compare it to the you know, cryptocurrencies like BTC and ETH. So it's always worth keeping that in mind. Um, and we really try to encourage members as well. If you're like genuinely interested in it, you know, go ahead and test it and all that. Um, and therefore, you know, you should be eligible for an airdrop, you know, in a real authentic way, rather than just, as you said earlier, Nick, just farming them. And then, um, unfortunately, what we see alone in this space is then just people selling them, moving on to the next one. So that's how I would sort of wrap things up in terms of just getting involved with Eigenlayer. Yeah, thanks for that, Matt. I think it's, uh, I reckon the audience would have learned a lot about Eigenlayer, a new platform that I think we're going to see a lot more of in the coming years in the crypto space. This piece of content was actually written for our members looking into tokenless projects that we're watching and following. These are regular updates that we provide our members. So this was only one of four which we covered. So members can have a look at the whole form and we can even drop a link for this in the YouTube video. If this is something that you're interested in, I think you can head to our website and look at the membership offerings. For more here at Collective Shift, I suggest subscribing to our free weekly newsletter. It's our new revamp newsletter, which is emailed every Friday and gives you actionable insights into the most important developments in the crypto space. So join over 10,000 people in receiving our weekly newsletter and subscribe over at collectiveshift.io forward slash newsletter.